From far and wide, Oilers fans, this is Dolany TV. And welcome back to another edition of an Edmonton Oilers game preview here on Dolany TV. I'm Tyson Dolany. As we get set for the Oilers versus the best team in the NHL, and that's a scary statement considering where the Oilers sit after the past two games against Vancouver and St. Louis. However, this is the interesting stat I just read on Twitter, and I think it'll interest you as well. For the Oilers, this is only their second time in Ken Hitchcock's tenure, right? All those games so far this season under Ken Hitchcock that they have had two straight days of practice. That's huge. That is absolutely massive because now Coach Hitch knows this Oilers team inside note as much as he could at this point and can push buttons in those practices as you saw with the lines that he did. And now we can kind of see what those changes have in effect against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's go break down a couple of key things here for the uh, Oilers, courtesy of Jack Michaels right off the top is what I want to start with. We'll start with the second lead, not the first lead. Uh, Oilers have won six of last seven against Lightning at home. That's huge, right? That's a huge barometer of how the Lightning have fared in Edmonton. Now, you got to remember that's against an Edmonton Oilers team over the past two, three years that haven't exactly been the best. And Tampa Bay's last loss in regulation came November 27th. So that's a stretch of 10-0-1 hockey. That's, that's a lot to contend with if you're the Edmonton Oilers coming off losing to the St. Louis Blues and Vancouver Canucks. However, tonight I think it's, like I said, going to be a very much change, different approach for the Oilers, same same approach in terms of defensive responsibility and stuff, but offensively, like you see the line of RNH, McDavid, and Pugliarvi in practice. That, after taking a look at Pugliarvi's stats this morning, it kind of makes sense what they're trying to do here. Connor McDavid, you know what? He's got a great shot. He'll shoot the puck when he wants to. That's no problem. That's no question. What they're trying to do here with Nuge on the wing and with... Y Yesa Puliarvi on the other wing is get Yesa Puliarvi to shoot the puck more. In 24 games this season, he has 29 shots. Make any sense to you? That should make sense. Because unless you're Alex Jason, you don't need to just shoot the puck once a game to score. You need to shoot two, three times a game. And Yesa Puliarvi, I think in his past five games, has had four shots. So you got to think of. What Ken Hitchcock is saying to Pugliarvi, who's played excellent the past couple of games, just go out there, shoot the puck, and score. It's as simple as that. And honestly, I don't think he's telling Pugliarvi he has to go out there and score. But if you shoot the puck, yes, Pugliarvi, who's shooting 10.3% on those 29 th shots, you know what, guess what? One is going to go in if you get five or six shots this game. It's almost guaranteed. And I'm pl uh, playing with... Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins and also maybe getting some rep time on that second power play unit is going to be transformative for Yessa Pugliarvi who is going to be absolutely critical to the Oilers success this evening right if you have nothing out of the top line Connor McDavid he's going to be a power play driver five on five driver but he's got to have his own line working and without dry sidle you got to hope that Pugliarvi can pick up a little slack because, yes, as much as I compared Nugent Hopkins being better than Drysaddle in terms of the key role on the team, I would say that, I would say, and you would say, that Nugent Hopkins is a step down offensively from Drysaddle. We all agree on that, I believe. So you got to look at Nuge as a step down. Now Chieson, who's got the crazy shooting percentage, you're replacing him with Yessa Pugliarvi, who really the only good credit to his past five games has been work ethic. Well, guess what? Now you've got a little bit different look for Connor McDavid, who now knows maybe what Ken Hitchcock's getting at, and I hope to goodness it works, or else this could be a long, long night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. However, I don't think Ken Hitchcock would go into the game Throw up Pugliarvi, Nugent Hopkins, and McDavid. They have no success, get totally shut down in the first period. And then all of a sudden, ah, you know what? Second and third, all yours, boys. Keep going. I don't think 
and I almost am 100% certain Ken Hitchcock is not that kind of coach. He's not lines in the blender, but he'll go back to what works in terms of dry settle, McDavid and Chiaison, if Nuge, McDavid and Pool Party are not working out early. So Tampa Bay, what we know of them is they are a scary, scary team. That's as, almost as simple as I can put it for you guys. Right now, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys by the looks of it. Yep, seven guys over 20 points this season. E, ah, that's tough, tough to credit right there. Kucherov, 52 points in 36 games. Somehow Kucherov, we all look at Kucherov as this elite sniper. Oh my God, he's got scary shot. Look for him on the power play, he's gonna kill us. Kind of like that Brock Besser did in the Vancouver game. However, he's only got 15 goals this year and 37 assists. Then you've got a guy like Braden Point who's got 21 goals, 24 assists for 45 points. Steven Stamkos, 18, 19, 37, and 36. Tyler Johnson, 25 points in 35 games. Yanni Gord, 25 points in 36 games. JT Miller, who I, I, don't, I didn't expect this out of him, but 25 points in 36 games. You play with good teammates, look what happens, I guess. And Ryan McDonough and Alex Kalorn, both with just over 20 points. McDonough, 22. Kalorn with 20. Victor Hedman in there, 29 games played, 19 points as well. So this Tampa Bay offense is absolutely scary. And you want to talk about doing damage. Well, you got to look for Nikita Kucherov on the power play. I'm saying it's not quite the same exact thing as Brock Besser, but on the power play, it absolutely is. Seven power play goals, 20 power play points to lead the team. Does Nikita Kucherov. That is a scary stat right there. So... Like it was against St. Louis and Vancouver, keep those teams off the power play. Just save your legs. That's literally what it comes down to. Don't worry about saving the goals, because if you don't go on the penalty kill, you're going to save your legs, and you're not going to save those goals as well. But the key is saving your legs, because guess what? You get burnt too many times on the penalty kill, yeah, with McDavid, you might be able to get three even strength of three on your own power play, and you're 3-3 three, three in the third period. However, then after spending six penalties on the ice, shorthanded. Now all of a sudden you're looking at, oh man, it's the last five minutes, we're gassed, call our timeout at the four minute mark, and then you're down by one with 20 seconds to go and you don't have a timeout to use. That is the dangerous situation that you get yourself into with too many penalties early and often in a hockey game. So instead of trying to save the goals by not going on the penalty kill, look at it by saving the legs, Make the smart play five on five, keep it that way. That's all I'm saying. That is one of the biggest keys for the Oilers this evening against Tampa Bay because they are a deadly power play team, but they are also a team similar to the Oilers that when they don't score, they're still going to work you, work you, and work you for two minutes, and that's not, not a good place to be. So guys, that is the preview on Tampa Bay's offense, defense, whatever you want to say. Andre Vasilevsky, Vasilevsky, I, don't, I honestly, I've said it probably a billion different ways over my lifetime so far that he's been in the NHL. Whichever way you go with, have fun with it. However, the man himself for the Tampa Bay Lightning, 11-3 and two overtime losses, 2.35 goals against average and a 9.30 save percentage. Louis Domingue, 15 wins, four losses, 2.99 goals against average and a 9.04 save percentage. How is that even possible? It's the Tampa Bay Lightning offense, obviously. Louis Domingue getting very lucky that his offense bails him out every game considering he's given up three goals a game. But, hey, it is what it is. So either one of those guys starts. You know if it's Louis Domingue, it's going to be the, uh, the Oilers looking very, very tough and hard to see how many goals can we get past him without giving up. And that's where it comes down to. Without giving up because now leading into the Oilers goaltending situation for tonight, Yes, sir. My man, the starter for the Edmonton Oilers, Miko Koskinen, gets back into the net. And we'll see what he can do. I am excited to see if Miko Koskinen gets out there and uh, runs the show for the Oilers once again. He loves home ice. That goes back to the Jack Michaels tweet that I said I was going to bury the lead on. Koskinen, 7-0, 972 save percentage, three shutouts at home so far this season. He starts against the Tampa Bay Lightning. That is going to be a very good sign for the Oilers. You know how confident he is starting at home. You know how much it means to the Oilers to have him starting at home. So 
Miko Koskinen, best of luck against the league's best team in the Tampa Bay Lightning. I wish you all the best, and I think we've previewed this game enough, guys. I'm Tyson, this is Dolany TV. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Dolany TV, because you will not want to miss my updates along during the game, because, well, as long as we're doing all right and I don't get too frustrated, I'll be tweeting all game long. I'm Tyson, this is Dolany TV. Guys, I am up on out of here.